The purpose of this video is to help you complete the worksheet portion of your Cybertext practice set. Before we start talking about how to complete the worksheet in your Cybertext practice set, we need to make sure that you understand how to copy in Excel. There are several ways of doing this. There's Control C and Control V. There is right clicking, copy, and then right clicking, tell it to paste. Lots of options. I want to tell you the one I'm going to use in this video, that, and that is the fill handle. I want you to see that if I were to be in a cell and then hover over the bottom right corner, do you see where it looks like a crosshair? It's very important that your mouse look like this if you want to copy. If I then click and drag it on down, that's going to copy. I can click and I can drag it to the right, and that is going to copy also. Again, it looked like the cross here. What I want you to see won't work. First off, what if I'm pointing to any place other than the bottom right corner? You get a four-pronged arrow. If I were to click and drag that, that is going to move. That is not going to copy. So, very important that if you're copying, as we're going to do in a minute, you're going to be hovering over the bottom right corner. You've got the cross here. Click, and then you can drag over. You can drag down. And as long as you're copying to adjacent cells, the fill handle is likely the easiest way to do it. The first thing I want you to understand is that when you record a transaction in the general journal, and I've just made up a few right here, I've got three basic entries. When you go to this worksheet, the unadjusted trial balance portion of them is automatically completed for you. In other words, Cybertext is taking the journal entries you recorded, posting them to the accounts in the general ledger, and telling you what the balances are right now. So you don't have to go through that process of posting. If I were to make an adjusting entry, and those start here at like entry 27, so I'm just going to make up one. If I were to make an adjusting entry, which are any entries starting after the 27th, based upon mine, this says that adjusting entries start after the 20, entry number 27. Then I go back to the worksheet, and do you see that it, that Cybertext has automatically posted these also, and it records it as a debit here and the credit that I told it to. What I want you to see is that these two columns right here, your unadjusted trial balance and the adjusting entries, are going to automatically be updated based upon what you enter in your general journal. Also, the adjusted trial balance is going to be automatically updated. Cybertext will calculate it based upon what you have here in the unadjusted trial balance and in the adjusting entries. For example, you see down here under my revenue account, I had a balance of 10000 I made an adjusting entry for 8500 so my new balance is a credit of 18500 So this portion is done for you. Based upon what you enter in the general journal, your unadjusted trial balance, your adjusting entries, and the adjusted trial balance will automatically be completed for you. What we need to do now is to finish the rest of the worksheet. First off, a little bit of accounting on the worksheet in case you did not cover this in your Accounting 101 class. Two major columns. This column is for the income statement. What goes in those columns is what goes on the income statement, which are my revenues and my expenses. These two columns here are for the balance sheet. What goes in them are my assets, my liabilities, and my capital. Also, we're going to put our dividends in this column also because we don't have a separate column for that. So this will contain my assets, liabilities, capital, and dividends. And I should also say that contra assets go right along with the assets. Now, there's some good ways to do this, and there's some not go so good ways. So let me show you what I don't want you to do. Here is one way we could make this work. Our first one right here is for cash, that's an asset. I could come right here and type in the number that's in the adjusted trial balance. Here is why I don't want to type numbers in here. 
Let's suppose after I'm working on my project, I have typed in whatever this figure is right here, in my case, 17075. But then I have to go back and make a correction. And I realize, I realize that I have an error in this first entry. And that should be 100,000, not 10,000. Well, when I make the change, do you see the adjusted trial balance automatically recomputes because it's always calculated based upon what is in the general journal. But if I have typed a number in here, it's not going to change. So what we'd like to have instead is where if anything changes in the adjusted trial balance, it will automatically change in the appropriate column, be it the income statement column or the balance sheet. And I want to show you the easiest way to do that. So instead of typing in a number here, I want you to write a formula, a very simple formula. All formulas in Excel start with equal. I want this cell to simply equal G8. I can type in equals G8, I can type equals and then click on the cell either way. And do you see I now have a formula. I can look right here and see that that equals G8. Now that's a good formula and what I would like to do is to copy it all the way down to what goes on the balance sheet. And the very last thing that's going to go on my balance sheet here is dividends. I also need a formula over here to handle what goes in my credit column. Here's the very easiest way you can do it. If you click right here, bottom right corner of what you have selected, do you see the little crosshairs? If I click, hold it down, and drag it over, it will fill in all of those also. That's my easiest way to do it. Once I've got everything here in column K, highlight it, that's called my fill handle, the bottom right corner, click and drag it over. And now I have all the formulas I need here. Let me show another way you could do it though. Instead, while I'm right now in the credit column for cash, I could just equals. That would need to equal the adjusted trial balance credit. Okay, which has nothing in it right now, which is why I'm getting the dash. I could take this again, drag it on down, and now I have formulas in all of these columns. What's good about this is if a number changes over here, it's automatically going to change over here. I don't have to go back and type in anything different. If I change a general journal entry, these will automatically change and so will these. Down here I have my revenues and expenses. I'm going to go to the credit column on the income statement for my revenue account. Equals and I wanted to equal this cell, H31 in my case. I'm going to go back to that formula. I'm going to click it, drag it on down, 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 down to the very last expense. Let it go. And then I would like to also have similar formulas for the debits. I'm going to go right here, get my fill handle again. This time I'm going to drag it to the left. And I now have a formula here, for example, that says the debits for my revenue account equal whatever is in G31. Again, how else could I have done that for the debits? I could have just says equals, click on the cell, come back, get my fill handle. It's got to look like the cross here when you copy it down, not the four pronged arrow, and drag it on down. What's good about the way that we just did it is if anything changes, in these first three sets of columns, it is now going to automatically change over here. If I type numbers in over here, that's not going to happen. Next, we need to get some totals. All right, we're going to do it the simplest way possible. In I-47, I'm going to write a simple formula using my sum equals sum left parentheses. And I'm going to come up here then and select from I-8 down through I-41. And you say, but we're totaling up expenses and expenses don't go in the balance sheet. And you're exactly right. This is simply the easiest way I can do it to make everything be very copyable. So I'm going to put a closing right parentheses on that. Understand that instead of selecting the cells, I could have just typed in equal sum left parentheses I-8 semicolon colon I-41 right parentheses. Now that I've got a good formula right here, I can go to click bottom right corner. Again, that's my fill handle. Click, drag, 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 and let it go. 
And now I have formulas to total up each of these sets of columns. The next thing we need to do is to have a simple formula that will calculate my net income. Now we all know that, that net income is the difference between revenues and expenses. Here are my total revenues. Here are my total expenses. I'm going to end beneath my total expense number, I'm going to write a very simple subtraction formula. Equals my total revenues, which for me is J47, minus my total expenses, which for me is I47, and I'll press enter. I'm also going to need a similar formula over here. For whatever the income statement totals are off by, the balance sheet total should be off by that same amount, but in the opposite direction. So, I'm right now beneath my total credits in the balance sheet column. My formula is say equals total debits, which in my case is K47, minus total credits, which in my case is L47. Do you see why both the difference between the income statement totals and the difference between the balance sheet totals is 108,000 in both cases? That's a good sign. If those weren't equal, we've made a mistake then. Finally, to wrap this up, we're going to write another set of simple sum formulas. In I-49 equals sum, left parentheses, we want to sum I-47 to I-48. So I've got that formula. Let's get my fill handle here. Drag, drag, drag. And now my two totals for my income statement equal, my two totals for my balance sheet equal. This is important because you will not be able to complete your worksheet until this is done. Basically until the difference between the two income statement totals and the two balance sheet totals is the same but in the opposite direction, the practice set is not going to let you move on to preparing the financial statements. So that's why it's important that we get this balanced here. I could have just typed in numbers for any of these cells that I have highlighted here, but that would defeat my purpose because if there's even just one small change in a journal entry, anytime I've typed a number in on the worksheet, it is not going to change. But instead, by using a formula, these numbers will automatically recalculate anytime there is a change in the general journal. Understand that the worksheet is just a tool to help you in preparing the financial statements. We don't publish it for the world to see. It simply makes it easier to prepare financial statements. For example, when I go to prepare my actual income statement, I've got all the data that I need here in this one area. Down here at the bottom, I know what the answer is going to be. When I finish, I better end up with a net income of 108000 this time. I'm also going to find here all the numbers that I need to prepare my balance sheet. Well, that's almost true. There's one number that I'm not going to be able to get from here, and that is my retained earnings. You'll recall from Chapter 1 that you must complete the statement of retained earnings and calculate ending retained earnings before you can move on and prepare your balance sheet. But every other number that I need is going to be given right here. So the worksheet is just a tool to help you in preparing your financial statements to gather up all the data so that it will be easier to prepare your income statement, retained earnings statement, and balance sheet. The key I've tried to illustrate to you here is why it's important for you to use formulas for completing your worksheet instead of typing in numbers because again if you've typed in a number and anything changes in your general journal it is not going to change on your worksheet.